So real quick, I got to go back now to the answers. Garumph. How was the how was the conference? It was good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you feel conferred upon? There are those right answers. There are those right answers. There are those right answers. I made some funny jokes here. There's some answers there. And now we're here. Lena, what was your answer here? Four to the power of five. Uh, the edge length of a cube with the volume of 343. Carl is seven. And Karin, did you get this one? No. Asia, did you get this one? No. Back to the front. Ash, did you get this one? Negative three. Nice. Number nine, Ayla, you're back. Did you get it? Oh, I don't know if I'm right. It doesn't matter. You just say. No judgment here. This is a safe space. Yes, it is. Why would you say something so hurtful? This is a totally safe space. I'm never mean to you guys, no matter how silly an answer you give me. Even when you tell me that it will only take 15 steps to walk 290 miles. I still let you say it. It is the fourth root of 405. That is correct. I did too, and I didn't know what to Okay. Why is it correct? If there's a single three out here, and we needed groups of four, that must have meant there was three to the fourth under there. Under where? Three to the fourth is three times three times three times three, which is 81. And then 81 times five is 405. Because 81 times 5 is the same as 80 times 5, which is 400, plus 1 times 5, which is 5. 405. Yeah? There's no negatives anywhere. Where? Oh, in 8. Why is it negative? Oh, because you have to, it has to reciprocate. Because 3 cubed is 27. Right now, the 3 is on the bottom. Right? Okay. See, you screwed me up there, Bailey, because at the end of the section, I was going to do the going once, going twice, going thrice. It's okay. It's fine. Because this, safe space. You should. And number 10, Harnar. It's tricky. It's really tricky. It's not really even a very fair one. N cubed to the one third. That is perfectly acceptable. Could you simplify it one more step? Yes, you could. To M to the two thirds over N. Both of them are acceptable. I will take both of them. In the new form of marking, this would get you three, right? Because this shows complete understanding. This would get you that four to show over and above. M to the two thirds over N. How does that look like two thirds? Well, that to me looks like a two and a three. That looks two, like three thirds. Well, let's just do this then, shall we? That looks an awful lot like two thirds to me. I don't care. <laughs> mm. <laughs> that so far on the page is out of. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Nice counting. It's a safe space. Math teacher can only be as good as the students. Oh. All right. Evaluate this using prime factorization. Now, a great many of you would have gone right to your calculator, gone square root 9604 and got 98. I know a bunch of you did that. Even though if you did that and you wrote 98 with no work, I would give you no credit. So to do that, you got to take 9604 and break it down to prime numbers. Since it ends in two, what should you break it down with? Since it ends in four, what should you break it down into? Two. 4,802. Ends in two. Break it down with two again. 2,401. Uh-oh. Can't do it now. Can't use three 
because two plus four and one is seven. Seven doesn't divide by three. Can't use five because it doesn't end in zero and one. What's the next prime number? Seven. Nine's not a prime number. That gets you 343. And then, oh, seven, that gets you 49. And then, oh, seven, seven. And that gets you a group of two seven. So out comes a seven. A group of two seven. So out comes a seven. And a group of two two. So out comes a two. Seven times seven is 49. 49 times two is 98. And that's what you would need to get the full two marks available to you. <gasps> Hmm? He said do to. It's my duty to teach this to you. <laughs> he said duty. Joke never gets tired. When the plumber arrived at my house, because he's a friend of mine, to fix my toilet, he said, How's your day? And I went crappy. And he said, Mine too. Get it? Because he's a plumber. So every day is crappy. But then he was late coming to my house. So I said, It's ironic. The plumber got backed up. <laughs> this class is what? Laugh Central? That's what I thought. All right. Now, the first one, how do you get the area of square A? 5.1 squared. And how do you get the area of square B? 3.5 squared. And what would you do to get the total? Add them, and that will get you an answer. Now, if you did that with your calculator, because I didn't say any, I gave you no rules, you're allowed to do that with your calculator, would have gotten 38 point blah, right? Now, if I wasn't letting you use your calculator, then 5.1 is 5 and 1 tenth, yes? Which is 51 over 10, and uh, three and a half is uh, six and one, seven over two, right? And then you would square and you would square and you could go further. But I let you use your calculator so it doesn't matter. If you got the 38, you get the two marks. Why is it a two? Because you have to actually know what it means, why a square root is a square root and why it's the side of a square. Everybody cool? All right. Now this one, I used to give you the measurements in yards and then make the kids tell me the total in square feet, but I wasn't in that mood. So I just left it as yards today. I was, so it's the exact same thing. 4.3 squared plus 9.3 squared and it's something like 106 or some crap, I don't know. Great, it's 104. And you get two marks for it. I. Now, exponents. Is there a right or a wrong way to approach this? No, as long as you do all the steps. What would I do with this one? You, I would simplify in there first because I don't want to make that many distributions because I might screw it up. So I take that center in there and I have a squared and a is a cubed. I have b and b to the three, which is b four, c to the fourth and c squared is c to the sixth. And then all of that is cubed. So I have a to the ninth, b to the 12th, c to the 18th, yeah? Oh, no, it's not cubed, I'm sorry, it's only squared, idiot, dummy head, sorry, six, eight, and 12. Yes, over what's happening here? B, 10, C, or C, B, 6, C, 15. That comes over here, B, 6, C, 15. Anything with the A's? No, nope. so it's A, 6. 8 and 6. I can cancel those six and I can cancel six of them. That leaves me with two up there, yeah? B squared. And I can cancel 12 of them and I can cancel 12 of them, but there were 15 down there, so there were three left. Everybody cool? No, it's out of two. So that page is out of seven and two, four, six, eight. That makes that page out of 15. 
Okay, well, that's the point. Now we talk about it. Where did you go wrong? I don't know. Were you okay right here? Did you simplify in there right? Okay. So you're good? Okay. You get two marks for number four, but you had to do two things. I wanted a right answer, and I wanted what you did. I don't care what you did, but I needed you to be able to explain what you did. First of all, what is the right order? What is the biggest one there? Four root four. What's next? Three root six. What's next? Root 30. And what's last? Two cube root five. That gets you one mark if you have the order correct. What's your method? Describe the method you use. So I do not care what your method is, but you all had to have a method. What'd you do? What are some things people did? Louis? Louis estimated, right? That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. Louis said, okay, well, the root of 30 must be a little bit more than five. The root of four is two. Two times four is eight. So eight is bigger than five. Cool. Root of six, Louis said, well, that has to be a little bit more than two times three is six, right? Yeah. Okay. One method. Estimate. What's another method? So you used your calculator and rounded the decimals. No problem. Perfectly legitimate. Anybody got another way? Everybody did one of those two? Okay. What I would have done is I would have said, okay, well, root 30, fine. 4 root 4, so I had root 30. 4 root 4 is root 64. 3 root 6 is root 54. And 2 cube root 5 is the cubed root of 40. That's what I would have done, right? Cube root of 40, we know is just slightly more than three, right? Which, since that's just slightly more than three, that's almost the same as the square root of nine, correct? Right? So now they're all square roots, and so now I can put them in order. That's the biggest, four root four, there. That's next, three root six, then root 30, then the last one. Everybody understand? That's the way I do it. That's my method. Everybody cool? Everyone's got a way they can figure it out? That's all that matters to me. Give yourself two marks if you got it. Uh, who would like to do 5A? Hit me. Yeah, you. Three root five. Absolutely right. Do I care how you do it? Some of you will say 45 is nine times five and stop right there because that's got a root. Some of you will take 45 and you will break it all the way down and find your group of two. Do I care which way you use? No, couldn't care less. What's different in B? Who's doing B? Who's doing B? Hit me, Ash. Two root five. Yes, but don't forget the little index. Two cube root five. If you forgot it today, take full marks. I'm in a good mood. No, these are all out of two. How did you do it? Again, you took 40. Some of you can stop at 8, 5. Why? Eight's a cube root. Some of you will break 8 down. 2 and 2, there's your group of 3. Out it comes, leaving a 5. Yeah? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 243? Ayla? 9 root 3. Okay. Because 243 is 81 times 3, right? What's the square root of 81? So out comes a 9. What stayed in there? A 3. Everybody cool? Once, twice, thrice? Those are all out of 2, so that section's out of 6. You decide how much you deserve. 
Express each radical as a power. Okay? So, what does the radicand become when it's a power? The base. What does the index become when it's a power? The denominator. What does the exponent become when it's a power? The numerator. Three to the five-fourths. Two marks for each of these. This one's tricky because there's more than one answer. What is the index when we don't have an index? Two. What is the power when we don't have a power? One. So that is x to the fourth over y cubed to what power? One half. Can you go one step further with that? What would it be? X squared over y to the three halves. Right? Oh, wait. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Better, Ash? Okay. Everybody cool? Everybody understands why? Because one half times three, three over one times one over two equals three over two. Everyone's good? Okay. Now, there are people that might observe just that one moment and they would say, that doesn't seem like a very safe space. But if you were here for the whole class, you would realize, indeed, it is a safe space because really all I'm doing is defending myself from your attacks <laughs> and keeping myself in a safe space. Oh, beef. <laughs> there is no beef. This is a vegan class. What? I'm just kidding. Relax. Okay, this one's really, 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 really tricky. Okay, I'm not joking. This one's very tricky. So what do I have here, really? I got 64n to the fourth. That's the whole base, yes? To what power? 1 over 3, right? Now, where does that exponent go? To what? To both of them, yes? So I have 64 to the 1 third, and I have n fourth to the 1 third, don't I? 64 to the 1 third is the same as the cube root of 64, which is what? That's the square root of 64. 4. 4. Four, and what do I do here? What do I do over brackets? Times. So that's four over one times one over three, which is four over three. So this is n to the four over three. Where most people screw it up is they forget that this 64 gets the cube root two. Everybody cool? Yeah? Okay. Now, if it was this, 64n to the fourth, it would be different, wouldn't it? Because then that four would be going to the 64 as well. Everybody good? All right. Now, this question, the next question caused a lot of grief because some people are like, do you mean how many times the dice get rolled? Or do you know I mean how many times there's a turn? So, there's eight people in the game, yes? Before we roll the dice, because that's why I'm using the word expected, how many people do you expect to be knocked out in the first round? Half of them, right? Because every time you roll the dice, it's a 50-50 shot. It's possible that it won't happen, but we're asked to tell the future. If you were to bet, how many people would you say would be out? Half of them. So in the first roll, we're going to go down to four. Do we have a winner yet? No. no. So roll one, we have no winner. How many people do you expect to drop out on roll two? Two, two of them. So we're down to two. Do we have a winner yet? No. Roll three, I'm left with a winner. Three turns of the game. Yes. I would also accept how many people had to roll here? 
Eight. So there were eight rolls of the dice. How many people had to roll here? Four. How many people had to roll here? Two. Two. So there was also 14 actual... Understand? I would also accept 14 because the question is worded poorly. And every year I forget to change it. How can it be a tie? It's either even or odd, Louis. Yeah, but what if both people are like ended up as like off at the same number? Like oh, I see what you're saying, like right here. Yeah. Yeah, but that's why I said expected, because there's no way to know, right? You would expect there to be, you'd lose half each time. It's out of two. Give yourself an appropriate mark. Louis, you know what you're thinking. You're most of the way there, so give yourself one and a half. Everybody cool? Now, I always end up in a big argument right there with at least one or two students in every class. Oh, how would you know? You're wrong. <laughs> of course, I am not because I use the word expected. Right? I've had many fights with a good friend of mine about this. He says, if you were flipping a coin and you miraculously flip 10 heads in a row, the chance of you flipping an 11th head in a row, are, it's never going to happen. And I say, no, it is going to happen. It's still 50-50 on that 10th flip. Or you, can have, or you can use a technique that can land that now head. Yeah, that's <laughs> not real. Because you don't like people to do that. Because, what? Because the reason why you've already done those 10. Yeah, they've if already said, happened. Because if you said before, probability would, would be very low. Yeah. But since you already know that's happened, it's already 50-50. Yep. It's what's called mutually exclusive. You guys will be doing plenty with that if you take math 12. Now, in the other book for the other class, this plus didn't print. Did I make some kind of deal of it and tell you guys that there was a plus sign there? No, you said no mistakes. You said, oh, I might have something you never told them. Okay, that's because it printed on mine, but that plus sign isn't there on yours, is it? No. But of course, you can see that if you add negative 0.25 and negative 0.75, you get negative 1. Right? Huh? But that's the only thing you could do to get safe space. Safe space. Safe space. So where was her mistake? Where did Amy make her error? She, she added. What should she have done here? Subtracted. So it should have been negative 0 0.25 minus negative 0 0.75. And what do two negatives give you? So it was point zero, negative 0 0.25 plus 0 0.75, which is 0 0.5. So the error she made, she added. That gets you one. How do you fix it? I just showed you how to fix it to get three to the point five. Is that an acceptable solution? Three and a half. Yep. What's another way I could write it, Louis? Three and a half. Three and a, to the half. And what's the third way I could write it? Oh. Root three. I will accept any of those. Yeah? Everybody cool? So that makes that page out of three. Out of three. This page is out of two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen. 16. So 3 and 16 is 19, and 15 is 34, and 17 is 51. I get. Can you flip the first one? That's what I get. You probably missed one of your pages. I highly doubt you got 32 out of 51. You know how to do all this stuff. Or you counted some things that were 2 out of 1. Yep. When will I get this number from you? Tomorrow on your test. When will I get your last quiz out of 19 from you? Tomorrow on your test. Wait, what is 
it today? 51, I have. That's the way I count it. But when you don't do part of it. I did like, I missed like two questions. No, you're not. What? The quiz is on 19? Quiz is on the, quiz was out of 19, yes. Everybody has their number? All right, now listen to me, please. At the bottom of page 117, there is some blank space, yes? This is what I did for the other class. I am offering you that the same service. I wrote out everything that your test tomorrow is going to be on. All right? It opens with the number system. Real, whole, natural, irrational, rational, irrational. Then we moved into GCF, LCM, then into exponents, all the laws. So x to the m plus n, x to the m minus n, x to the m times n, x to the zero, x to the uh, less than zero negatives, and x to the fractions. All of those. Then we did simplifying radicals. Then we did entire radicals. Then we did multiplying radicals. And then we did adding and subtracting radicals. Forgot the C. Now, if you wish to write that down, you may write it down. If not, it's being recorded, okay? So what I offered the other class, I said, okay, have a look at this, flip back through your notes, take a moment, talk to your neighbor, decide if there's anything there you wanna ask me about, and then I'll go over it, all right? There is one other thing that Mr. DeVries has asked me to do that is not part of grade 10. You will never be tested on it, but he wants you to see it because when kids hit it in grade 11, it's kind of like a, a bit of a wall to some of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I'm gonna show you something that has no effect on your grades in grade 10, but he wants you to see it, okay? Yeah, I'm gonna show it to you today after we've gone over this, okay? Take a moment, talk to your neighbor, have a stretch, do what you need for a couple of moments and make sure, decide if there's any of that you wanna talk about. Okay, that's why I did this. Me too, Mars? Yep. System. No, that is horse crap. You do not need to talk about everything in here. You do not need to talk about x squared times x to the fourth. You know that's adding the exponents. What? Be able to classify a number. Okay? So remember, the number system works like this. The smallest group is naturals. One to infinity. The next is wholes. Zero to infinity. The next is integers. Negative infinity to positive infinity. And the next is rationals. Everything else that's a fraction. Or a decimal that ends or repeats. Remember, it goes this way. If you're natural, you're automatically whole, integer, and rational. But it doesn't go the other way. It's like those Russian nesting dolls. You know those things I mean? With the littlest dolls inside, you pull it apart, and then there's no... Not Russian. I think they're Ukrainian. I'm sorry. Huh? No. Huh? Are you assuming? Well, no, because back in the day, the Ukraine was part... When I grew up, the Ukraine didn't exist as a country. It was part of the United... 
the USSR, which everybody called Russia, even though it wasn't. The country we now call Russia also didn't exist when I was your age. It was a Soviet republic. When was it first actually called Russia officially? It's been Russia for centuries. Okay. So it was the USSR for a while. It was USSR from 1919 to 1989. All right, GCF. Anybody need to talk about GCF and LCM? Sure. Okay, give me a number between one and 100. Five, four, seven. Give me another number between one and 100. Eighty-one. Terrific. Now, GCF and LCM, you find them the same way by prime factors. 64 is two to the Sixth. Two times two times two times two times two until you get six of them. 81 is three to the fourth. Right? Yeah. Are there any common factors? This is two times two times two times two times two times two. This is three times three times three times three. Any common factors? No. no except the number that's common to everything. What number is that? One. Everybody cool? Factors are lower than the numbers you have, always. Because two times three equals six, those are the factors. The factors are out here. The multiple is out here. Everybody cool? So this one has no common factors except one. That is possible. But every pair of numbers has the lowest common multiple. And the lowest common multiple is you count everything once. So I have six twos and four threes. So the lowest common multiple of these two numbers is indeed 64 times 81. Everybody cool? I chose those on purpose because they didn't share a GCF and the only way to find their LCM was multiply them together. Everybody good? Now we're going to change it slightly from 64 to 56. We know 64 is 2 to the 6th, yes? 56, let's break it down. 2 and 28, 2 and 14, 2 and 7. Yeah? So that is 2 to the 3rd times 7. All right? What these are factors. These are factors. What is common? 2. How many 2s? 3 of them. So the GCF is 2 to the 3rd, which is 8. Everybody good? The lowest common multiple we count everything, but we only count it once. If I count all six of those twos, does that cover this guy's three twos? Yes. So the LCM gets two to the sixth, but I got to count everything. So I also got to count the seven. So it's 64 times seven, which is 420, 468. Okay. Is everybody good? All right. You know lowest common multiple from doing lowest common denominator. Everybody all right? All right. Now, as I was saying while everyone was yelling, I need to see everything. You do not need to see all of the exponent laws. Each, do you? But you do need to see the exponent laws mixed together. Right? For example, if I gave you this, 12... No, I lie. X squared cubed. What's that? X to the sixth. Six. Lovely. Right. What if I give you this? X squared Y cubed. What's that? X to the sixth, six, Y third. X sixth, Y third. Everybody okay there? Okay, what if I give you this? 3X squared 9x squared what if i give you this 3x squared squared 
nine x to the fourth. And finally, if I give you this, three x squared y squared. Does everybody in the room understand that progression? That's, you, I, I can't answer that question. That's like playing 20 questions with somebody and somebody says, is it big? No. It's a, it's a tank. Tanks are big, not compared to an aircraft carrier. You understand? So you can't ask me that question, Louis. Because technically none of the questions are hard because I've given you a map to doing them all, haven't I? Right? Okay. Is everybody good with that? I will tell you that in 17 years of marking math tests, the number one mistake in exponents that people make with this law is this bottom one. They forget that the squared goes to the number. Okay? They screw that up every time. So if I gave you this, 3x squared y all squared and ask you to multiply it by 2x, what would you do? You already know what this is. What is it? 9x to the fourth y squared times 2x. Now what? It'll show up in a second. It, why would it be 18? Because the numbers go with the numbers, right? You're going to forget that. That is 18x what? Fifth, because you know to multi add them. And y what? Square, because there's nothing else here. What if I put a single y there? What would this now become? Y cubed. Everybody good? Yeah. Right, that's the number one mistake on this law. Everybody's happy with it now? Okay, the next law that you all screw up all the time is x to the less than zero because you refuse to listen to what I say is actually happening. You guys stop listening at x to the negative two equals one over x to the positive two. That's where you stop listening. Unless we've talked a lot about it like you and I have at the front of the room here about reciprocals. The problem here is you all forget that this is really x over 1. So you flip it. So when I give you a question like this, x over y to the negative 2, you forget that that's y over x to the positive 2. No matter how many times I show you, you already know that this exponent goes to everything inside, yes? which gives you x to the negative 2 over y to the negative 2. You also all know that negative exponents can exist. And you know that that guy then has to move down to the bottom. And that guy who's already on the bottom and can't exist negatively has to move up to the top. Which is exactly what I would get here when I put that 2 to everything. Everybody good? That's the second mistake. Or the, the mistake that everyone makes with negative exponents. You forget that it can flip everything inside. Everybody good? All right, now let's talk about what can go wrong with this knowledge. Everybody cool? Let's start with this nice easy one. 2x over 3y to the negative 2. What will that negative 2 do to the whole base? Flip it. So what will I have? 3y over 2x to the positive 2. Okay, now simplify it. Look back over here. 9y nine nine squared over 4x squared. X squared. Can everybody do that? No. Everybody? All right. Okay. I'm going to change it slightly. There is now a negative 2 with the x. It stays there. It stays there. Why? No. What did this do to everything in here? Everyone agreed that it flipped it, yes? But when I flip it, which exponent does it affect? Only the red one. So that stays negative 2. The red one becomes positive 2. 
Now, what would happen? I would still get 9y squared, and on the bottom, I'd have 4x to the what? Negative 4. Now, what there is no good? Which part of it? The 4, the x, or both? Just the x. So this would be 9x4, y2 over 4. Is everybody with me there? Now, some of you have a lot of trouble with flipping this and remembering that that inside exponent doesn't change. So then you do what Louis did, or what I think Louis did when he was talking, and I'll change to purple to show you that, to prove that it still works. Louis said they cancel out. And he's kind of right, because they did at the end, didn't they? But you got to be careful. That negative 2 is going to go to this 2, isn't it? So I'm going to get 2 to the negative 2 x to the positive 4 over 3 to the negative 2 and y to the negative 2, right? Is this allowed? Is that allowed? No, because it's a negative, so it has to go down to the bottom. Is that allowed? No, because it's a negative, but it's already on the bottom, so where does it need to go? Up to the top. Is this allowed? Yes, because he's positive. Is this allowed? No, because he's negative, and since he's in the denominator, where does he go? Back up to the top. Now, what would you do with the 3 and the 2? 3 squared is 9, x4, y squared, over 4. Same answer. The problem that you people have with exponents is not the laws. It's not the work. You can all add, subtract, multiply, and divide. It's the fact that for the one of the first times ever... There's no right way to do it. You have to decide your path. And when else have we seen that in this year? Trig, which also caused you problems. You could all do trig when I gave you the triangle. But when I said, figure this out, and you could use any of the three, a bunch of you had trouble with that. Because all of a sudden, you're not responsible for a path through math. You're responsible for knowing how to figure out your path through math, which doesn't happen very often before grade 10, does it? Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's what I was about to go to next. Negative bases are allowed. So we'll erase everything here. And we're going to change this to a negative 2. Everybody okay? This negative 2 means everything still stays the same. I'm going to use my way, so I'm going to flip it to 3y over negative 2x to the negative 2 all to the positive 2. Yes? Everybody good? Which is going to get me 9y squared over... What's negative 2 squared? Negative 2 times negative 2? positive 4, x to the negative 4, and then that would come up, and I'm still at 9x4, y2 over 4. Cool? Now, now I'm going to move the negative out in front. So now, this whole thing here has a negative out in front. So we move it all around, 9y squared over 4. Our x comes up. But the whole thing is negative. Yeah. That's where that's coming from. Okay? Now I'm going to make another small change. I'm going to leave the negative inside here. But I'm going to change the exponent to a negative 3. What does the negative exponent do to the fraction? Reciprocates, Reciprocates it. So now I've got... A pause while we think about it. 
I've got 3y over negative 2x to the negative 2, all to the positive 3, yes? 3 cubed is 27, right? Y cubed. Everybody happy? Yes. Negative 2 cubed is what? What's negative 2 times negative 2 times negative 2? Negative. negative 8. X to the 3 times negative 2? Negative 6. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6. What there has to move? The negative Just the negative 6. 27 X 6. Y3 over what stayed down here? Negative eight. negative 8. Now, that is done. But you could also write that negative right in the middle because it's the same thing. Okay? Where it comes from is this. Negative 1 over 2 equals negative 1 divided by 2, which gets me negative 0.5, right? 1 over negative 2 is 1 divided by negative 2, which still gets me negative 0.5, right? Negative 1 half is negative 1 divided by 2. 1 divided by 2 is 0.5 with a negative out in front. I still get negative 0.5. The only thing that isn't allowed is negative 1 over negative 2, because that is positive 0.5. Is negative divided by negative is positive. Okay? That's what I mean when I say you can't forget all your previous math. Ash. Of course. That is a concern for me, that negative exponents. Other than that, I think everybody is pretty good with this stuff. Right? What's the trick? If I ask you to do square root of uh, 8 times the square root of 2, those are little numbers, so what are you going to do? Those are tiny numbers, so you're just going to multiply them together, right? Yes. So that's the square root of 16, which you would then simplify. What if I gave you this? 3 root 8 times 2 root 5. Now what is it? 6 root 40, you're multiplying. 6 root 40, and where would we simplify? The 40. Everybody cool? What if I gave you this? 3 root 28 times 2 root 45. Simplify first, and then go back to that step that you already know. Yeah? Yeah. All right. And can I do this? This is the last thing I'm going to show you because we're going to run out of time. And we're not going to get to that thing I wanted to show you. 2 root 5 plus 3 root 6. Can you do that? Yes or no? You cannot because the radicands are different. But what if I gave you this? 2 root 5 plus 3 root 45. Could you do that one? Yes, because that is 9 times 5, right? So that's 2 root 5, out comes a 3, plus 9 root 5. How many root 5s do I have now? 2 root 5s there, 9 root 5s there. How many root 5s? 11 root 5s. Is everybody good? Test tomorrow on this. Nothing to be fair, afraid of. Because A, you know it all. B, we've reviewed it. C, it's in your notes. D, it's on YouTube. E, you just got a review on it now, fresh. And A, B, C, D, E, F, G, you have a cumulative in a couple of weeks that you can fix it again anyway. So is there any reason to be stressed about tomorrow? No. No. no.